Hello and welcome to another post-processing tutorial. Today I'll not focus on details like exposure blending, dodge and burn or what other techniques I showed you in previous videos. Today I want to talk about my workflow. So I'll use an example which I photographed during a recent trip to Vietnam and I go through all the steps I normally do when processing a photo. And also I show a little bit of the processing but yeah, not all the details. So I'm gonna be rushing through it a bit, focuses on the workflow and yeah, if you're interested in a more detailed um, tutorial, then you can head over to my homepage and yeah, check out the tutorial section and there I have two complete workflow tutorials which are each more than two and a half hours. So for example this panorama tutorial and down here the complete workflow for processing landscape photos. So the workflow I'm showing today is basically the same as I use in those tutorials. But yeah, those tutorials are much more detailed and I show every bit, every yeah, step I take to bring the photo to those final results. So let's not waste much more time and head over to the photos. What you see here is a photo I took in Vietnam. We were staying at the El Aliana Hotel and yeah, I did some photography for them, photographing some of the villas. And yeah, this is one of the photos I took. And the first step normally in my workflow is to make a selection of the photos I'll be using for the edit. This is very important because normally I have around or between five and up to 50 photos for one single scene. So for this photo here, it wasn't so bad. I had basically, let's see, three, six. So I had eight photos here. And of those eight, I'll be using six photos in the end. But there are other occasions where, as I said, I have up to 50, for example, if I photograph at the coast, I have breaking waves and yeah, I usually take lots of photos, have my camera on the tripod and in the end, I have to select those. And I actually have a video on this process, so how I approach this on my channel here and yeah, you'll see now a link popping up here or I also link it below. So if you want to see how I do the selection, head over to this video. So we'll now go over to step two. So once I have the selection, which you see the blue marked pictures, I can activate this filter and now I only have the selected images here. And the second step in my workflow is always the raw processing or the pre-processing. And this happens in Lightroom and I'll quickly go through it. So what I do normally, I select one of the photos and yeah, let's just take the first one here. And yeah, typical setting I'll do, I will always set the white balance here. <clears throat> because if I change the values here and later sync it over to all the images, I can be sure all will have the same white balance. If I don't change the values here, it's possible that the other images have different white balances and are not synced. And the reason for this is I, I use auto white balance because I'm lazy and yeah, sometimes they're a little different or if I shoot at different, yeah, over a longer period of time also the white balance might change. And the easiest way is just to always adjust it. And even if it's right, I normally adjust it by just one. So, but let's see here if I, to make it a, yeah I need to make it a little cooler but not too much in general the white balance is right what I could also do I just do auto and see what it does and yeah actually that's not too bad so I'll leave it at that then I bring down the lights bring up the darks yeah around 50 is usually what I do and yeah nothing more I go to the details I bring up the mask down the radius and set the sharpening between 1 and 10 and the reason is I do the sharpening much later in my workflow and I don't want to have sharpening artifacts right from the beginning and you get those if you dial in a too high sharpening uh, amount and yeah you would bring this through all the workflow and yeah that's not the preferred method I usually do this at the end which you'll see later so 
I always bring this down. Then I do lens corrections, chromatic aberration reduction, profile corrections. I usually, usually leave a bit of the vignette because I also add this later. Yeah, and that's basically it. That's just the raw processing and then I select all the images, synchronize, make sure everything is selected and synchronize it. So now here for this, you see that I have bracketed exposures and if you've seen a recent video of mine where I showed you how to easily blend multiple exposures, you'll know that I'll first adjust the exposures so they're equal and they will be much easier to blend. So this is the base exposure and this is basically what I'll be using as yeah for the most part so to say and the bright one I'll just bring down two stops. Now I can dial up the dark tones a bit so I don't lose anything and it will be later easy to blend the two so I will use most of this from this exposure and just the bright parts from this here. And yeah, actually those two images are just used for the foreground here. So I also did focus stacking. So next I have those three, the dark one, which I'll bring up plus two. And then I bring down the lights to counter this. This one I'll just leave as is. And the bright one, again, minus two. And I'll dial up the dark tones. So blending will be very easy. And then I have a final image here where I did some light painting out here and yeah, I'll try to adjust this so it's similar to this exposure. So also let's do minus two and again bring up the dark tones. So that's basically all the pre-processing I'm doing here. I select all the images and now I export them as TIFF files using Profoto RGB as color space, 16-bit and yeah, I do no resizing, no sharpening. And yeah, that's basically it. That's step two. The next step in my workflow is blending all those images together. And I'm here in Bridge where I have opened up the folder with all the files. I select them all, go to Tools, Photoshop, and I load the images into layers in Photoshop. And again, if you've seen my tutorial about the easy exposure blending, you'll know what's happening now. I'll blend those three images together. I'll then blend those two together because this is one bracketing series, this is a bracketing series, and that's an additional images, uh, image. Sorry. And yeah, after blending those using the techniques I showed in the other video, I do the focus stacking. So I now speed up the processing a bit and yeah, later I show you the stacking. So the blending is nearly finished. I blended the first bracketed exposures and I'm now working on the second part. And yeah, what you saw me doing and see me doing here is <coughs> I'm using Lumensia um, to select the bright areas. So I get the selection and I'll then just paint into the mask in this case with black and yeah, for those here, for those two, I just focusing on the foreground. So get the foreground blended because this is what it's used for. So this is the foreground set of exposures. Afterwards, I just flatten it down. And now I have this blended image here, which is for the background. Then this one, which I'll be using here foreground. And I also have this image where I did some light panning. And actually, I'll first blend in this one because I didn't move the tripod, I didn't change anything. So the focus is also on the background and I don't have to do any alignment here. So I now blend in this exposure with a light painting on the outside. So black mask and yeah, then just 
dried in at a hundred percent and that's very easy so very rough drying and yeah makes this image a little more interesting also up here yeah at least that's what i was thinking here yeah. this looked a little too dark and and now we have some yeah nice light on the outside and also what i normally do the light here was a little cooler than on the inside so quite typical i add a photo filter clip it and yeah i can warm up the light a little bit so it will better merge with the rest of the image okay so far so good i can now merge down the two and and now as you've also seen in my introduction to focus stacking selecting the two then aligning the layers because changing the focus usually also changes the frame a little bit and what i'll now do I go in 100 percent but first put a mask on this so to reveal the layer beneath so the layer which is sharp on the foreground i need to paint with a black mask into or with a black brush into this mask and i just go in very closely and try to find out where the transition is so let's see so it's a little sharper here yeah and actually the background exposure is already very sharp nearly to the front so I don't win a lot here it's just a little bit and I'm not even sure if you can see this in the video but yeah every every little piece every little improvement in the sharpness counts so let's also paint down here and I don't bother about this because I'll crop it out later and what I now do I just go into the mask fill up what I just drew and also let's draw up a little bit on this side because that's quite close and yeah that's basically the blending I now flatten it down and the next step will then be the cleanup and also transformations first of all I need to crop a bit as I said let's go to unconstrained I don't want to have this here, so I crop in on this side. I uh, don't crop in at the bottom. Maybe a little bit on this side, but not too much. So it's nice to have this framing here. So the dark areas or the, the wooden areas, the wooden areas on this side. So that's all I'm cropping. And yeah, now it's over to the next part of my workflow. So the first step in my workflow is the cleanup and also some transformations to the image. And I start with the transformations and I did crop into the left and right and now the aspect ratio is no longer uh, three by two. So that's nothing which normally bothers me. But what we also have in this image here is we have quite a lot of this area here in the top where there's not too much going on. And yeah, what I do from time to time, I do some transformations and yeah, let's just do it. So the target is a three by two crop. So let's first go to the crop tool and select, well, actually it's called two by three. <laughs> so go down to the bottom and make sure to have this delete crop pixels not active. So I do the crop now. Now I use here the rulers, control R, hides, and brings them up again. So, and I place a marker right at the top here. So now what I do, I go to unconstrained and bring it up again. So I have the top part of the image again. And yeah, I press enter. And yeah, what I now do, I already showed this in a tutorial, I think two or three years ago, maybe even longer. And I not transform the complete image, I just transform parts of the image. And what I want to do, first I copy this and I make a selection here 
Oh, actually, let's start with the foreground, which is also a little bit too much. So I first select here the foreground part just down here and Control T brings up the transformation tool and I bring it up a bit. So just shrinking it down and I don't go crazy here because then you'll see this if you have diagonals in the frame. So I just bring it up by a few pixels which will not be noticeable, but it will help the image in the end. So I deselect, Control D, and now I move it down. Let's first hide the base layer so we better see how far we have to move it. And now also I do the same for the upper part here. I select this area, Control T, and I bring it down just to fit within this frame, within this marker I have here. Let's go in a little closer so I have it correct. Okay. I press enter, deselect, and yeah, now I simply apply the crop, go to the two by three, bring it down. Yeah, and this time I also, I can delete the crop pixels press enter and yeah now I'm finished with the cropping or actually I'm not let's do this again one step back yeah I should move in a little closer I think now I have it correct go to the bottom Okay, so this is now the crop. And yeah, what I also have to do now before the creative part is doing some cleanup. And if we look at this mirror here, I wasn't very careful when setting up my camera. So yeah, we have the camera here in the frame and yeah, I just do some cleanup and uh, use the healing brush and the stamp tool here. And yeah, I'm just gonna speed this up a bit. Okay, so now that I'm done with the cleanup, I'm also done with the preparation part of my workflow. So the first, first four steps here, which I showed you, are just the preparation. And yeah, they always happen before the creative part. And the creative part is where I apply contrasts, colors, and yeah, that's really the fun part. And yeah, since this tutorial is already getting a little bit too long, I think we're gonna move the creative part to another um, yeah, tutorial. So we'll split it here. Also, if this was a little fast in times and I also used a little yeah, time-lapsing or speed up of my processing, as I said in the beginning, this workflow is also what I'm showing in my yeah, more detailed tutorials. And in those, I also show a lot more techniques. I explain everything. I explain why I do it, how I do it. And yeah, there's a lot more to it. Here, this one is just a very fast overview and yeah, doesn't go into much detail. It's just not possible on YouTube. I can't put up a two and a half hours video here. So yeah, if you're interested, head over to my tutorials and also yeah, see you next week with the second part of this uh, workflow tutorial.